Jay Catch of Locked On Cougars covering all things BYU. From the perspective of a university that was independent just three years ago, mm-hmm. what makes, I'm going to leave it vague to start, what makes the Big 12 special? The fact that BYU has been accepted by their peers in this conference, because uh, here's the deal. I, I've, I've been covering BYU for long enough, Drake. There was a institutional bias at the Pac-12, which BYU, if they had their druthers years ago, would have been in that conference. They would have loved to have been there because it's a West Coast oriented league. Obviously, BYU has fans all over in that footprint, but. The fact that they were shunned so hard and outright mocked by some of the fan bases and the schools in the Pac-12 pushed BYU the other direction. The fact they've gone into the Big 12, they found like-minded schools like Baylor and TCU that are religious-minded schools, but also the rest of the schools in the conference have accepted BYU for what they are. I, I The Cougars, they love being in this conference, and they are a proud member, and I don't think they have any intentions of jumping anytime soon because I think they're very, very content and happy where they're at. Let me do something. And this is terrible of me to do. This is very, oh, this no. is, I'm, I'm scheming here. Do you feel as though a, an Arizona or a Utah, the new Pac-12 teams, are getting that same feeling out of the Big 12 when they're entering post being in a Power 5 conference? I think Arizona is because Arizona was so yeah. gung-ho about joining the league. Arizona State and Utah not so much yeah. because they were so reticent to make the move, but they realized that the writing was on the wall there and they made the jump. Colorado, I think is more in the camp of, of an Arizona where they, they made the leap. They said, you know what? We're out. We're, we're jumping. We're going back to our, I also might I interject. I think Jake Colorado is only worried about Deion Sanders. They don't, you can put them whatever the league they want. Colorado <laughs> is focused on one thing and it's Deion Sanders. Okay. Fair, fair, fair point. Very fair point on that front. But yeah, I do think that the, the two schools speaking of ASU and Utah, when they jumped into the league, it was simply because they realized they're on a sinking ship. That was yeah. the pac 12 and they needed to find a new home. Whereas Arizona, they were out there saying, yeah, we'll do this. We, we've got strong basketball. We'll, 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 we'll fit right in with this. So yeah, I do, think that there's a difference just in terms of the overall mindset of why they ended up joining the uh, joining the big 12 do you think jake that utah and i'll ask jt wister self locked on you to the same thing do you think that utah fans by and large and you've you've dealt with utah fans for a very long time have come off the high horse and been a little more level-headed with their membership in the big 12 after these last few weeks Yes, absolutely. They've been humbled. Uh, I work in sports radio here in Salt Lake City, and guess what? We talk about three main things on my sports radio show. The Utes, the Cougars, the Jazz. Those are the three things. Well, guess what? The Utes, they have been humbled by what's happened. Obviously, they've been in all kinds of upheaval. When you have your offensive coordinator step down, the quarterback you had pinned your college football playoff hopes end up injuring himself, and he's out for the entire season. It's just, it's been a really, really rough run for Utah of late, and I do think the fans have been humbled. I think they've realized maybe, maybe, just maybe, we weren't just going to roll through this conference like we thought initially. You know, BYU came in with UCF, Cincinnati, and Houston, and, and they have a different perspective coming from a conference. But does it feel like, from your perspective, it was kind of the perfect merge for those universities to come with BYU? I mean, those are the schools that BYU paired with to make it into this conference. Does it feel like those four belong in their own pod of, hey, hey guys, this makes sense for us to go here together? I do think so. I, th- I think all of them are hungry to be a part of the power four level. So they they yeah. kind of banded together. Now, have they played each other enough to really kind of build that bond? That's maybe, not, maybe not so much so far, but I do know at like an institutional level. So speaking of the university presidents, the ADs and the like, I'm sure all four of them are very happy to work with one another and say, you know what? We did a good thing by jumping into this league and we're having a great time being here while we're here. Jake, those matchups, BYU against Cincinnati or BYU against UCF, even BYU against Arizona or Arizona State, yeah. is that something you feel as though Brett Yormark should target every year to let these new schools play one another very consistently? Absolutely, because yeah. here's the deal. BYU and the Arizona schools, my grandfather, was a he's been a BYU fan forever, and he remembers when ASU and Arizona were whack rivals of BYU, and he said mm-hmm. there were some very, very good games in the 60s and 70s between those schools, and he wanted that back, and so I, I think that you have those ancestral rivalries that will be renewed with the Arizona schools. We mentioned the fact that UCF, Cincinnati, Houston, well, they're all kind of new to this league and trying to kind of find their footing and build new rivalries. Well, why not get them together and see what can come out of those matchups because you really don't know until you try.
In talking about the conference as it exists, we have to go back to the original eight members as well, from TCU, West Virginia to Texas Tech and Baylor. For a BYU, and I I do believe you would answer this differently than a Utah fan. The Utah fan is probably still up in arms and trying to figure out their existence in the Big 12 Conference as they come off the high horse. But for BYU, who came in so humble, what is your opinion of how the eight teams have welcomed the Cougars and UCF, Cincinnati, the like, into this league? It's been open arms. That's the thing about this is they they welcomed BYU and they understood that BYU brought a brand name with them. They brought this kind of that mountain time zone. Because remember, when BYU joined the league, they were out on an island on their own. The closest yeah. school to them, uh, just in terms of, of sheer mileage, was Texas Tech. And it was over a thousand miles away. So mm. BYU brought a new element to this league. They opened up a new time window. Yes, now that you've added Utah and the Arizona schools in Colorado, that brings a whole new element in terms of the TV time window you can utilize. But BYU was welcomed with open arms because I think they understood BYU bought a brand name, brought a, literally a, nation, a national, if not international following because everybody knows that Cougar fans are all over the world and tuning in to what's going on with BYU. You're in my podcast can speak to that directly just with the numbers that yeah. when you talk BYU, they get propped up from all over the place. But uh, yeah, they've just they felt welcomed with open arms and it's been a really, really good reception so far. Moving forward, what is it about the B, uh, about the Big Twelve that makes it distinct to you from the A- the ACC, the SEC, the Big Ten? Is there something that sets us apart in a way? Uh, so far, it's the parity because yeah. okay, Baylor went and beat Texas Tech and beat the doors. Yeah. Yeah, I thought Baylor was left for dead. And I know that you have it. Your Baylor's near and dear to your heart. So I, I, the Bears really, really cool to see that. But that shows you that on a week by week basis, this league is going to be topsy turvy. And yeah. Utah, I would have told you coming into this year, Drake, Utah was going to go to the Big 12 title game. I didn't know if they were going to finish first or second, but the way things have unfolded for Utah absolutely astounding to me because I think that team's got way too much talent to be performing at the level it's performing. But as you mentioned, there's a bunch of things going on apparently behind the scenes that have have caused things to kind of fall apart. But the biggest thing is just overall as a league, this is going to be a league that on any given week, some team, let's say a Cincinnati might go to an Iowa state and beat them or a BYU could travel to a West Virginia as they did last year and get beat. That that's the fun part about this. You never quite know. You can have an idea of who you think might win on a given week, but never, well, I guess I'll say this, expect the unexpected when it comes to the Big 12. Yeah, Utah is one and three in conference play now after expecting to win the Big 12 championship. While there is parity, there are two teams at the top of this league that have been the exception to that, BYU and Iowa State, by winning every game they played this year. That is a key thing to build the conference's brand. Coming up, is BYU the best new addition of those eight to the Big 12? Let's talk about it on a Locked On Big 12, Locked On Cougars podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's show is brought to you by FanDuel. Sometimes I go to FanDuel and say, man, what are we doing? BYU is only a two-point favorite against UCF on the road. I I don't want to jinx it, but I do want to add a little extra money to my pocket because I think that BYU is going to win this game. Analytics tell me BYU is going to win this game. Hopefully, BYU wins this game. NFL fans, college football fans, you can start the season with a big return on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. When you get a hunch in the middle of a game, too, there's live betting. Check the live stats, play by play, so much more on the same play, on the same page you place your bets. You get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's right. You don't have to win it. Just place your first $5 bet. Get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. FanDuel.com. If, if you got a hunch like I do, that BYU will beat UCF. FanDuel.com is the place to go. And America's number one sportsbook, FanDuel.com. Visit them today. 